What's up guys, Hakurai here, and in this video I wanted to talk about graphics and art style in MMORPGs, specifically in Ashes of Creation, as recently I've heard a lot of people talking about the realistic art style approach that Intrepid is taking versus a more stylized, like in games such as World of Warcraft. But ultimately, what does that mean exactly in the grand scheme of things? Most of us who have been playing games for a long time are most familiar with a more cartoony or stylized art style because the majority of the games we grew up playing or that are popular now use it. League of Legends, Fortnite, World of Warcraft, and then basically every single thing from Nintendo. It's easier for a game with stylized art to pop out because it's capable of using bright colors and over exaggerating features. You can go a bit crazy with the monsters in the game and the weapons, all of it. And it's a lot easier for the players to accept those things as part of the game world. Stylized art styles for games also has the benefit that generally you can get away with your game being more blocky and using less polygons on character models and the environment and instead putting more effort into the colors and the textures. So what about realistic games and their art styles? Lately, we've seen plenty of games that focus on a realistic art style that look amazing, looking at New World or Call of Duty games or Dark Souls or Monster Hunter World, etc. There's plenty of examples to come up with. When you are trying to achieve a more realistic art style, higher poly count is pretty important in the models as we recognize blocky objects as not being realistic in nature or on people. You'll notice it right away if trees and rocks and enemies are blocky, but the main place you'll notice it is in the faces or your own character's body. To give you a comparison, Character models in the original World of Warcraft typically ranged between 2500 polygons to 4000 polygons, but in a realistic game like God of War Kratos, the main character is rocking around 80,000 polygons. Now, what do all those polygon numbers mean exactly? Polygons in a character model are like a face. On a cube, you've got six faces, but the more complex the shape and the less boxy that you want it to look, the more faces you need to add so you can bend it at certain points and smooth out the model. The smoother you can make it, the easier it is to make it look realistic and also make it much easier to give it smooth animations that look natural. One of the things that makes original World of Warcraft so impressive is how animated the Blizzard art team was able to make its characters even when they had such few polygons compared to what we have in typical models today. Think of it like this, if you animate a sock puppet with your hand, it has a ton of points where you can bend it so you can make a sock puppet pretty much move really fluid in any direction. But if you try to animate a box puppet, it's got limited sides and joints, so the animation looks more clunky, like they would in a game like Minecraft where trying to make it look realistic is basically pointless. Why is the amount of polygons relevant? Why do we want to keep that number low? Well, in a single player game, you don't, really. But when you are talking about an MMORPG, you're talking about rendering tens or hundreds of these models on your screen all at the same time, depending on how many other players are around you. Each polygon displayed on the screen needs to be rendered by your graphics card multiple times a second. Each frame, as a matter of fact, updates the position of the polygons on your screen, calculating the lighting and all that stuff. So when you suddenly dump 10 or 20 characters on your screen using God of War 3's 80,000 polygon model, suddenly smoke is puffing out of your mid-range PCs and the computer starts dropping to 10 FPS. Your graphics card is taking longer to refresh what's on your screen and is only able to do it 10 times a second instead of 30 or 60 because it's just too much stuff there. So now that we've established that in order for realistic graphics to look good and age well, the models need to have a decently high poly count. But if we try to use too high poly counts like in good looking single player games such as the RE3 remake or Last of Us 2 or God of War 4, we'll destroy our GPUs when we put too many characters on the screen. So what is the solution? Easy. Optimization. Optimization in a game goes into the file size of your textures, how the game loads things, how much it's tracking per frame, like physics, etc. There's a ton of things basically, but most of that is covered by the engine. We are talking about putting potentially hundreds of highly detailed models on the screen simultaneously, so what I want to focus on are the two major methods of optimization that will handle that aspect. They are level of detail and culling. Level of detail, or LOD for short, refers to how many polygons are displayed on an object based on how close it is to your in-game camera. For example, if you look out your window and you see a tree that's really far away, 
you can't easily see all of the leaves and all of the details. You probably can't even tell that tree is 3D from a distance. So in a game, why would you make your graphics card render all of that tree's polygons when it's so far away you can't even see them? Most engines utilize level of detail to turn certain objects into a single 2D image or polygon when they are very far away. And as they get closer, in multiple stages, they slowly tell the graphics card to render more complex versions of those objects until when it's right in front of you, you see it in all of its glory. Now culling or occlusion culling refers to basically hiding any polygons that are not in your line of sight. So whatever direction your camera is pointing, that is all your graphics card is rendering at a given time. It doesn't render what's behind you or beside you or what's behind that building that's in front of you. It only renders exactly what your camera can see. With an optimal culling system, you wouldn't even be rendering the backside of the models you are looking at. For example, if you look at the back of your character's head all day, your graphics card doesn't need to render your face and load those polygons. That's a waste of GPU processing power. But when you put too much stuff into your game worlds and overuse these two features to compensate for it, it becomes distractingly noticeable. When you want to create a game with realistic art style, like Ashes of Creation is aiming to do, and at the same time have large scale battles with 250 versus 250 players, you've got to have a really good way to handle level of detail and culling, or otherwise you're counting on your player base to have super high end PCs. And back in the day when older titles like EQ or World of Warcraft came out, that just wasn't possible. But with modern technology and engines, it's definitely doable. Game engines and developers have hundreds of tools available to them to help them handle many moving targets on the screen. Creating a clever algorithm that is able to tell the graphics card what the camera can see and can't see, and thus doesn't need to render, is where the hard part lies. This would require very precise algorithms that the game needs to feed your computer in real time to do these calculations quickly and then decide what to render and what not to, because an inefficient calling an LOD system can cause lag issues in and of itself. Taking all this into account, I feel that even though we have mostly grown up relying on a more cartoonish art style in our games due to the ease of optimizing them, with the technology today and careful programming, it's well beyond the possibility that talented and ambitious developers can handle making a game look realistically good and perform well in an MMORPG environment with enough work. Because of that, I feel like we are now moving beyond the time where realistic graphics do not age that well. Black Desert Online, as an example, has its pop-in problems, but it's also six years old and it still looks really damn good and uses a realistic art style, as do other games such as Terra Online and New World. And you know, just because it's realistic, it doesn't mean it can't be a little bit stylized in itself. Terra, for example, leans more on a realistic art style and it has its own unique look to its creatures and character models, animations and spell effects, etc. In my opinion, one of the major contributing factors to why original WoW aged so well isn't just because it's likable graphics, but it's the smooth animations and the spell effects that complement it. So when talking about art, you certainly cannot ignore those two aspects. If you don't believe me, just hop into classic World of Warcraft and feel how your character smoothly transitions between animations and attacks and watch the particle effects. It's incredibly satisfying and easy to follow what's happening on the screen. When we take a step back and look at what we've seen in Ashes of Creation so far, it's pretty clear that even though they're using a more realistic style and a higher poly count, it's certainly got its own style that doesn't delve too heavily into complete realism. Looking at the dwarf faces for their character models thus far, or the humans, I personally like the style. It does look a little bit stylized and cartoony, so they're not trying to go full on Kratos, and I think that's a good thing. The dragon looks badass with its movement and fluidity, and I especially like the creepy tentacle-faced spider monster that they showed off in the 4K footage, proving that even though leaning more towards realism, they've definitely got their own style and creative creatures coming to life. In fact, in the footage thus far, I think the biggest detriment right now to the art style that draws the eyes of the viewers in every single footage we've seen is the particle and spell effects. While the rest of the game looks clean and the animations and models are pretty good, the big ol' fire spell effects and the other effects that appear in the gameplay footage every time we see it are bright and harsh and flashy and way over the
the top and Steven has already made it very clear that they are working on toning them down. I believe that once those effects are turned down to look more natural and fit more into the game world and the environment, it'll greatly change how the game looks in a very positive way. But as it is now, it's shaping up to be a very beautiful game with amazing, creative and unique environments and creatures and I can't really wait to see more and dive in myself to try and get immersed into the world of Vera. I think we are beyond the age of realistic graphics not aging well. But that's it for this video. What do you guys think about realistic art styles versus stylized or cartoony art styles? Do you love one and hate the other? And why is that? Let me know in the comment section below. I love hearing everybody's points of view on these topics as it really helps widen my perspective. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed the video or follow me on Twitch or on Twitter. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. I am Boopin' out.